I'm uh, Ugo Pagallo. I'm a professor in jurisprudence at the University of uh, Turin, Italy. I'm a faculty fellow at the Center for Transnational Legal Studies in London, UK. And I've been working uh, with uh, several uh, institutions over the past uh, years, among them uh, the European Commission, the uh, uh, IEEE, and so on and so forth. Uh, and my fields uh, are AI and the law, robotics, uh, network theory, and uh, of course uh, some uh, specific fields uh, of uh, covering positive law as uh, data protection, intellectual property, and so forth. Well, first concern has to do with uh, the uh, unpredict unpredictability of uh, these uh, AI systems um, that depend uh, on uh, how they may react uh, to um, uh, some circumstances uh, in the environment uh, from their interaction with all, uh, other agents in the system. And uh, uh, moreover, um, since uh, most of the time we lack uh, data on uh, the probability of the events, uh, the consequences, uh, and so they cost, including human uh, lives. So it's hard to determine the level of risk. Uh, and so this would be my first concern. Uh, on the other hand, uh, but not least, uh, another concern uh, has to do with uh, uh, um, the political dimension of uh, today's debate. Uh, uh, that is, uh, has been much discussed uh, uh, yesterday, uh, let's call it uh, Elon Musk's letter uh, to the UN. Uh, but uh, today, uh, the day after, uh, we knew that uh, a 13 year old debate uh, uh, before the UN on uh, cyber warfare uh, substantially failed. So, my second concern has to do with uh, how the UN uh, could be. Of course, it is the proper institutional place in which to discuss the, this kind of things, uh, but whether this kind of discussion will uh, obtain uh, some uh, reasonable. Uh, outcome. That is an international agreement because that's what we are talking about. Mm -hmm. That is whether or not a ban, uh, at least uh, a reasonable uh, regulation uh, on uh, whether and to what extent uh, those uh, artificial weapons, let's call it, them this way, uh, can be used. Well, where are the first two scenarios, uh, humans in or uh, on the loop uh, are not particularly problematic, of course, uh, what uh, uh, raises serious problems has to do with uh, uh, full automation or given uh, alternative systems uh, 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 full autonomy in order to make uh, decisions. Um, here we uh, have, uh, nevertheless, a further problem. That is, more, most of the time when we talk about this kind of things, uh, that is, humans delegating, because that's technically speaking the term, uh, delegating uh, decisions to AI systems. Uh, it would be misleading to think uh, this mechanism as if uh, uh, automation uh, was uh, were natural uh, because there are several uh, human mechanisms that uh, are completely uh, automated. Uh, in many cases, we have to take decisions uh, without thinking uh, it twice uh, because we have no time uh, because of uh, evolutionary reasons. You name it. Uh, so the problem. Uh, is not whether uh, or to what extent we may delegate uh, uh, cognitive tasks and even sensible cognitive tasks to machines, uh, but uh, whether this delegation entails uh, uh, or not uh, uh, disagreement uh, among experts, uh, among, uh, in the public opinion, and so on and so forth. That is, we already delegated it to 
uh, AI machines uh, uh, sensible cognitive tasks. If you think about finance, <laughs> uh, most of all the financial transactions are done by my, my machines. Now then we have several, uh, some problems about that uh, as well, but most of the time people uh, even do not pay attention to that. Uh, why? Because there is no particular disagreement. In other words, uh, what I suggest uh, when we are talking about uh, delegation of uh, sensible cognitive tasks to machines, uh, AI systems, uh, artificial agents, uh, you name it, is to think first of all about uh, whether what we are delegating uh, uh, raises uh, uh, social concern, uh, ethical issues and so forth. Uh, and that explains a, a lot of uh, issues concerning, back to your previous question, uh, autonomous weapons. Uh, that is, uh, here we have a, a real issue because there is a huge disagreement about uh, the political, ethical and legal principles which are at stake in this uh, kind of delegation. So the problem is not uh, whether or not uh, a human on or in the loop is necessary, is whether this human delegation to machines entails, or, uh, whether or not entails uh, uh, social disagreement. That, in my opinion, is uh, very important. And what is even more important is that we shouldn't, this is an ethical standpoint, delegate to machines uh, tasks uh, which entail uh, social disagreement because it would uh, a way, a subtle or not so subtle way to bypass uh, political concerns uh, and uh, ethical uh, issues. Hmm. That's interesting. In other words, if I may, think about this, because that's uh, the other side uh, of the coin. Uh, when uh, the US started using drones in the mid-2000s, uh, uh, during the Second um, Iraq War, uh, there was no political debate before the parliament because no human was uh, sent uh, to, uh, to the battlefield. Uh, so that uh, here you have the other side of the problem. Uh, that is, uh, since we are not uh, risking uh, the life of uh, nobody's uh, uh, anybody's uh, daughter or son. So uh, we can skip this part of the political debate. Huh. Uh, but as a matter of fact, apparently there has uh, been no political disagreement uh, in the American Congress in order to start debating whether or not it's constitutional or legal uh, to send drones uh, in Afghanistan and so forth. Uh, so far I don't see a strict parallel between uh, nuclear weapons and autonomous weapons unless we are talking about the use of nuclear weapons via AI systems. That's another story. Uh, what I do see is, uh, however, a big difference. Since, as I told you before, uh, the very idea, especially if we are, if we are talking about robotic weapons, uh, cyber warfare is another chapter. Uh, they converge, but uh, let's, uh, for the sake of the argument, uh, uh, keep them uh, as distinct. Um, what I would say is, that, uh, what, what I said before, that is, uh, since when we are using robotic weapons, uh, uh, we are sending uh, no humans on the, uh, to the battlefield, uh, so, in, in a way, the threshold for entering into war uh, lowers. Uh, the public opinion uh, is not uh, so vibrant uh, or keen to discuss uh, uh, these kind of issues because no uh, humans, at least, uh, we are not sending uh, uh, the son or daughter of uh, anybody of our country to the battlefield. And so what I, uh, I see is the risk of uh, making uh, uh, the war more a uh, sort of an administrative affair rather than a political issue. And in fact, for 10 more uh, years, uh, decisions about the drones attacks by the US Army have been done by CIA officials. 
uh, with no uh, over political debate before the U.S. Congress. So what I see is this risk uh, that is, uh, as I told you, making uh, the war a sort of uh, uh, usual stuff, uh, routine stuff, uh, but with no, at, at least, uh, uh, taking into account the current state of the art, uh, with no such huge implications as uh, uh, those of uh, nuclear weapons. Mm -hmm. There are two ways to uh, approach your question. Uh, first, uh, uh, there is a typical debate about the pros and cons uh, of using these kind of weapons. Uh, among the, uh, the pros, uh, you can name uh, uh, the fact that theoretically at least uh, AI or robotic weapons uh, uh, wouldn't uh, torture uh, anybody, wouldn't rape uh, anybody, and so on and so forth. The problem with this kind of uh, uh, debate, uh, that is, uh, weighing uh, the pros and cons, uh, uh, but by weighing the pros and cons, we shouldn't uh, forget uh, the fact that uh, here we have to address a, a fundamental ethical issue. That is, whether or not we accept uh, that uh, even a smart machine uh, can decide whether or not to kill a human. Uh, even in the civilian sector we have this kind of uh, problem with uh, autonomous vehicles. Uh, whether or not it would be acceptable that an autonomous vehicle uh, could decide uh, uh, whether or not to kill uh, a human, maybe just to uh, let uh, uh, father for people uh, live in instead that kind of stuff. The second uh, issue I, I, um, uh, I see here is technical. That is, uh, at least uh, in accordance with the current state of art, uh, we don't have the technology in order to make such subtle uh, distinctions uh, between, say, civilians and uh, uh, the military uh, enemy. Uh, how or could an AI system uh, discern uh, a civilian uh, or vice versa uh, a military among uh, a group of uh, civilians? Technically speaking, uh, that very distinction and this uh, goes beyond the current state of the art and I don't know, maybe we will need uh, 10, 30 years in order to achieve that kind of technology. But as uh, Keynes used to say, the long term we are dead. So uh, I have these uh, two main concerns here. That is one is ethical and the other technical. But then uh, we have uh, to be realistic, uh, that is, uh, Back to some questions uh, and answers ago, uh, what I see a major problem is the fact that should we consider you, the UN, which is of course the proper institution uh, in which to debate these kind of issues, uh, capable uh, to uh, attain uh, in the short uh, term uh, any result in this field? Let me doubt about this. Well, I think here we're going to have to take uh, a crucial political decision. Uh, that is whether we want uh, to develop, further develop an AI as a simple uh, human substitute, or if we want to further develop AI as a way to strengthen uh, our uh, human capabilities, uh, to, to think about a uh, human AI cooperation rather than a human substitution through AI applications. And that's going to be a crucial political issue. Uh, on top of that, I think that uh, AI is going to be a good test uh, for understanding who we are as a species. Uh, that is, uh, it's a really powerful uh, technology. Uh, there are such uh, world of uh, positive uh, applications from AI doctors uh, 
to uh, whatever you can imagine, since I, I suppose that the limits of uh, AI applications are given uh, uh, only by human imagination, but the same applies uh, to the uh, negative, uh, dark side uh, of uh, this film. Uh, so in a way it's going to be a sort of uh, interesting uh, test in order to understand who we are as a human uh, species. Um, but uh, I would say that rather than debating uh, uh, apocalyptic scenarios uh, of super intelligences uh, and so on and so forth uh, to sci-fi, especially if you pay attention to what it's uh, the current the state of art eh? and what are the reasonable developments uh, of, the of the next uh, decade or two decades. Um, uh, I would be pragmatic and uh, uh, will further develop uh, such current fields as uh, control uh, uh, of uh, AI systems uh, and, uh, and the like. Uh, so, I think uh, that uh, rumors about uh, our extinction uh, are not uh, so justified. Eh? But at the same time, uh, uh, we're talking about a technology that uh, uh, raises serious uh, concerns, uh, risks, and threats. Uh, and I think that, uh, along with uh, all the uh, technical and legal uh, means uh, we have at our disposal, it's fundamental uh, the role uh, that the public opinion will play. Back to uh, our previous uh, discussion on uh, autonomous weapons, uh, I think that the public opinion uh, will and shall play a major role here, since uh, it's uh, pretty obvious to me that most national states, uh, the big players, uh, US, UK, uh, Russia, China, uh, will not accept a uh, a ban uh, on uh, what they are doing uh, in developing uh, in the field of autonomous weapons. So I, I think that pre uh, pressure should arrive from outside, so to speak, yeah? and the only uh, pressure of this kind uh, I can uh, imagine is uh, that of the public opinion, uh, organization uh, on the internet, blah, blah, blah. Cause, uh, until the moment in which uh, yeah, sovereign states uh, think that they have a competitive advantage uh, either for uh, technological reasons uh, or for their political motives, uh, I think uh, little room is left uh, for a uh, reasonable compromise in this uh, field. Sad, uh, but it's uh, realistic. And, uh, well, uh, to be realistic is the best uh, way to approach the things in an optimistic way. Thank you so much. Uh, Pleasure's mine. Pleasure's mine.